I was going to follow on from, from Andy's talk on just global digital trends and then focus in on some, some Google trends. So we haven't had the global trends. Maybe next time we'll get him to, to present on, on that. Um, but I want to talk a bit about one of the trends, and it's really an ongoing, ongoing trend of, of Google. And so if you think about what Google is, is trying to do when, when you're doing a search, there's, there's one or two things they're trying to do. That, well, they're trying to answer the question that you ask as quickly as possible, or provide you with the best information. So you'll see two types of queries. One's very much um, uh, a factual information. So you'll ask a question, and Google you'll see is, is giving you the answer directly in the search results. So that's increasingly a trend where you're seeing zero click SERPs. So no one gets the traffic. Google keeps the traffic because they're answering the question directly. If you go back several years ago, you go, what's the temperature today? You would then click through to a website and you would find the answer. Now the question, the answer is even happening before you finish typing your question. So you go, what's that? And then bang, the, the answer's there. You haven't even finished asking. They just know what you're, what you're asking. So all those websites now that used to have the temperature, their traffic is like, and more and more those sort of questions are happening where Google's just answering, answering the question directly. Um, the, other, the other thing is rich results. So this is the opposite end of the spectrum. So rich results may or may not end up in the more search ranking or search traffic. But you'll see, for example, we've gone, what's on in the central coast? So you'll see there's a whole new interface happening here where there's events organized by dates, there's titles, there's pictures, a bit of information on the central coast over here. You don't actually see a website until down, like I'm on a, on a laptop, so it's right at, the, right at the bottom of your screen. So you don't even see that website. So if you click on the search more events side of things, then we go into a whole new events section. So we've got a, a and from within here, you can filter your, when your date is, like when you're interested. So I did this the other night um, and I said tomorrow, and I got a list of, of results. Um, and I've gone and I've picked Gosford Race Day for the 26th, so that was yesterday. Oops. So I've got it over on the right here. So I've clicked tomorrow and Gosford, and we're seeing a bit of event here. I've scrolled down within here, so there's above that, there's maps, there's, there's images, etc. If I then click on through to the view more, it goes to the, 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 um, the actual website where this information sits. So the interesting thing about this is this is visitcentralcoast.com.au, Gosford Race Day. It's not the entertainment ground where the racetrack's actually being held. Um, and if I look at what's going on behind, this might get a little cody, but if you look in behind the scenes, I've run this through a, a, a structured, what's called a Google structured data testing tool. And over on the right here, you can see there's, we've got a type event, um, an ID, which is the URL, and the URL again. We've got a name, we've got a description, we've got a start date, end date, images, etc., etc. There's all this data that Google's picked up on the page, and it's all really structured. Um, if we go and go, well, this is the, the central coast of the Entertainment Grounds website. So they've got all that same information on their page, but if you look at their structured data, they've got nothing. So Google's not seeing in the background the information in a way that's presented to them that allows them to pull that information into the, into the events portal area of the Google search results. So that's, that's the essence of, of what's happening there. Just because you have structured data doesn't mean you're going to be in there. Just because you have it in there doesn't mean that you're going to be in the results. But if you, you need to present the information to Google the way they want it. So here's the different types of, of schema. So structured data, schema, sort of an interchangeable term. So we've got this, I've sort of starred a few of the ones that are probably the most relevant to, to the people here today. So we've got article schemas, carousels, events, FAQs, a local business schema product, which is your e-commerce sort of stuff. So that will have pricing, stock, in stock, out of stock, shipping, etc. Um, we've got recipes. Um, speakable is a new, new schema. Um, and video. So all these different schemas, and we'll, we'll skip through some examples so you can see how they how they appear in search. All of these different schemas are, are types of data that you can structure onto your page that influence how it appears in the search results. So you'll have different 
different features that pop up depending on the type of schema. So for example, this features uh, recipes and a carousel schema. So the carousel goes bang, you'll, you'll have it in that slider, and the recipes is going, well, it is a recipe, here's an image, here's a star rating, the prep time, all the different information that you, you could put into a recipe goes into, into the schema. A fact check schema. So I think I Googled, was Obama born in Africa? And so in the search results, there were a few different results that don't have it, but then this, this one had, there's a claim, it was claimed by, it was fact checked by, and then a link to give feedback on that, on that fact check. FAQ. So this is an interesting one. So I just, I just searched for first aid FAQ. You don't have to type FAQ in your query, but I'm just, just looking for one. So we've got two websites, which is a normal organic type listing, if you look at that part. But then underneath that, we've got three FAQs. So on their, on their page where they have that information, they literally have some FAQs at the bottom of their page, and they've used the schema markup to identify them as FAQs, and Google's now pulling that into the search results and giving you a whole lot more space than you'd ordinarily get. And so you only, on this page, you only actually see two websites. You don't, as you know, the top one's the one that gets everything in, and then the second one gets a bit more. If you're pushing that second one down, or you're the second one, you're pushing the third one down, you're going to get a lot more click-through rate on, on something like that. So then what you can start to do in, in the questions is so you, got, you have to think carefully about your, what you put in some of this. Because if you answer everything that they need to know, you might actually lose the click-through because you've answered their question. If you, this one here, how can I re renew my certification, you might have a little bit of a text with a teaser with a link going to your certification page. So then you drive people into another page, not your main search results page, but it answers their question. Um, where can I attend a course? You can then say, we have locations across the Central Coast, Sydney, click here for more locations. And so then you start to drive people through in the answer to different parts of, of your site. So you need to be careful when you're, when you're doing your schema to think, what's, what am I intending to have happen here? And what might the result be? Because the result might be you actually lose the click if you're not careful. Uh, product, so this is, I was looking for a mountain bike, and we found, um, we get star ratings, we get sizes, we get colors, options, uh, it's out of stock. I'm not gonna click on that one. So you, some things to think about if, if you, if what, what information you feed into, into your schema will impact the click-through rate. Massively. And I think I saw, I read one study where an out of stock will decrease your click through rate by like 10%. So not everyone will see it, but back you'll get, you'll get fewer clicks. Site links, search box. So this little bit, that actually searches your website, not Google. So you can get people dive in, dive in deeper into your site from, from there. So some, some benefits of implementing schema, so increased brand awareness, so you get more space in the search results. You, there's also local search stuff that you can do, so your logos appearing, your, your social media properties. Um, you can start to do things with voice search optimization, particularly if you're feeding through to Google Home. Um, I put higher click-through rate here, but it can also be lower click-through rate, but it is, a, it is a benefit if you do it right, you will get higher click-through rate. Um, you can do things like integration with Google Analytics. So for example, if you do a lot of content publishing and you have different authors, you can tag up your, your author data and then hook that into Analytics and then do a view over your, all your Google Analytics to see who your most popular author is. Um, and then you can also have calls to action right within, within the search results uh, and better integration with social media sites. For example, Pinterest uses a recipe scanner. So if you have recipe schema on your site, Pinterest will pick that up and pull that into a rich card on, on their website. So I dived into one of our, our clients. So this is over a three month period. Um, so they're a reasonably high traffic website. Um, so what's that, 40,000 40, clicks a, a month. Um, they're in a newsy type type space. So you see the average click-through rate across all their traffic is 2.8% from Google search results listings with an average position of 2.21.2. If we look at a breakdown of how of the search appearance, so this is all, 
search appearance other than your standard search results. So we've got rich results, AMP non-rich results, AMP article, videos, and web light. So rich results is it's where there's some feature to the results that makes it a bit more, it might be an image, it might be a news thing. Um, so their click-through rate on this content is 4.2%. For AMP non-rich, so does everyone know what AMP is? AMP is a specially coded page that's really light, that Google likes, and they show quite often in news carousels, so a lot of news websites have, have an AMP page, and it loads almost instantly. So it's a cached, Google caches it, stores it on their server, and then displays the cache rather than your site. So AMP, so this is when an AMP article appears just in your normal listing. So there's nothing rich about it, there's nothing featured about it, but even that gets a 5.3. Interestingly, the article, which is the rich experience, has got a slightly lower one of 3.9%. Maybe that's because it might be in a carousel, um, so it might be kind of showing off to the side, it might not be the first carousel item. Um, but still, at 3.9, that's higher than the standard search results. Um, videos, so it's pulling out videos which can actually be played within the page as well. And then web light results, that's a very, web lights, um, I actually had to look up what that was, so I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know. And that's more um, countries or users with very low internet speed. So, and then Google's somehow serving them up a very light version of your page. So it must be driven off of the AMP, AMP stuff, so they're actually not displaying the proper website. It's just a very light version. So it's very, very low volumes. Um, so you'll see the impact of Implementing schema and rich results is, is well, double the click-through rate on, on some of these things. And it's not an insignificant amount of traffic, so I think from memory it was about 4 million, and we look at 1.6, about 1.6 million. So about 40% of their traffic is, is marked up rich results. And, then, and so if you think about the negative impact on the 2%, it's actually probably much lower than the standard traffic that they're getting. Um, so negatives. So depending on your search term and what your core business is, Google might be targeting you. It probably doesn't apply to some of us in here, maybe Josh from Indeed. Um, depends on the niche, They'll, they will, um, you know, they want to dominate and own your space. So travel, they may be showing, ripping out all the traffic from all those travel listing type sites and displaying it. If you're a, uh, an event website, we saw Visit um, Central Coast is actually in there, but Maybe if the entertainment grounds had there in there, then they'd have the priority over the Central Coast. And so then some of those aggregator type websites are probably sort of starting to, to struggle and they have to think really strategically about how they, how they operate. Also, Google answering the question directly. Again, if you're a more of a service-based or a product-based business and you're not just that transactional data, you're probably okay. But I know Sanitarium ranks for some keywords like, what does one cup equal? In measurement, some re really yeah. weird ones, and that traffic's probably dwindling. I haven't looked at the stats for a little while, but um, and then an implementation effort. There's obviously a technical component to, to getting some of this up and running, um, but it's not necessarily onerous. So, what does Google say about schema? So, does John Mueller is uh, one of the senior search guys at, at Google? Um, so, he said there's no generic ranking boost for structured data usage. Um, however, structured data can make it easy to understand what the page is about, which can make it easier to show where it's relevant. It improves targeting and maybe ranking to the top. So he's, he's, he's saying it's not like you're going to all of a sudden shoot up the rankings, but maybe they're just actually going to understand your content better. So maybe you will. Like, so it's kind of a roundabout way of saying there's probably an improvement, but if everyone was doing it, if you, 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 your competitor is doing it, it's not like... It's not like a massive jump, but there's, it's worth, worth doing. Um, so same, same guy, John, we don't use it as a quality factor, so it's not like we would say that this site has schema markup, therefore it's a better site. Um, the schema can help us extract entities better. And then another Google employee, if a team at Google recommends it, you probably should make use of it. The schema helps us understand the content of the page and it's, it is used in certain search features. Again, but not in ranking algorithms. So it's not a matter of ranking, but it's about giving, data, giving the data to Google to help them make a, a good decision about, about your website. Um, is there something 
you'll say. I think that's, that kind of covers it. Um, here's a few tools. Um, so we've got a structured data testing tool. So that's the, the tool that I showed first up, which was you pu plug your URL in and you can see what schemes are there. If there's any errors, any warnings, anything happening. Um, Google Search Console, so that's where I show you that screenshot of, of how your site is ranking in the rich results and the AMP and, and if there was any other schema in there. So if there was event schema, if there was, it would start to pull out that data into, into there. Um, and then depending on your website, um, how it's built would depend on how you approach building the schema out for your site. So these generators here, if you can, you can literally go in there, go, I've got a recipe schema, fill out your details, it'll give you the code, you paste that onto your website, that's done. But if you've got a thousand recipes, you're not going to use a, a generator like that. You're going to implement it at the code at the CMS level and make sure either the code's reading everything correctly or you might, if you're on WordPress, there's schema plugins, we'll implement a plugin and then and then make sure it's structured on the, on the right pages and we run some tests to make sure that it pulls the data data through correctly. Any questions? How do you sound Yeah, so the schema's been around for a while. Um, so there's actually like thousands of different schema property types out there. Um, the ones that I showed you on the screen are the ones that Google actually uses. But a scheme is a, is a um, it's like a consolidated group of, of I think it's um, Google, Microsoft, Yandex, and some other search engines that they've all come together and go, these are the standards for how we mark up pages within the schema entities. And then Google's gone, well, we're actually just gonna take notice of of these ones, but there's a whole myriad of, of things you can actually mark up your page. But yeah, Google's Google's always changing, but it's always the same. It's like user intent. The way they make their money, you know, might, they might push your results down and the ads get more featured or they get blended and so you can't tell what's an ad to what's not. But they're, they're always it's going to be user intent. Is the, is the query that you, is your website the best answer or the best result? For what the user's typing in, that's always always what they do. Just constantly trying to learn and do that. So then it's a challenge about making sure your content, from a from a user experience, from an informational perspective, is the best content. Um, and then this type of stuff, your schema is that extra. Um, you shouldn't just implement this. And if you have no, you don't have good content, and it's not worth while for your users, it's not going to do too much. You need that have that really good base of content, and then. And start to structure it. It's the extra cream. 